AMD's got a lot of GPU tricks up their sleeve. It's coming hot and heavy, my friend. Samsung's doing what they should have done ages ago, and Windows 11 decides to be a turd burglar. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Johnny Sins. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast, your family-friendly breakfast. It's exactly what we do here at Hot News. And let's talk about keeping it in the family of AMD with the first multi-chip module slated to debut by the end of this year. The Instinct MI200 should start shipping out to first customers by the end of the year, according to a corporate presentation that's gone out. The reason this is a big deal is that this is the Alderbron architecture, which should be the first debut from any of the major three GPU companies that's gonna have a multi-chip module design that's shipping out to enterprise customers. It's gonna be on cDNA2, which is AMD's compute architecture as opposed to their gaming architecture, but we're expecting this technology to trickle its way down to rDNA3, which should be coming out sometime next year. So having two chiplets on this GPU means that it's gonna have roughly double the cores of the current Instinct MI100, which sits at around 7680. Generally speaking, as because it's not gonna rely on like game developers to implement it like SLI or Crossfire, this should actually see roughly double the GPU performance because they have double the cores. But that's not the only thing that's increasing. The reports are also that it's going to have 128 gigabytes of HBM 2E as opposed to the current generation's 32 gigabytes. So major improvements all around, but there's some indication coming out now that the RX 7000 series, at least the lower end, might not be all that much of an upgrade at all, if any, because the new reports are saying that the RX 7600 and 7500 could be using current gen Navi cards, that is the RX 6000 series, so the Navi 23 or 22 GPUs, and then using a node shrink to TSMC 6 nanometers to then make the RX 7000 series. The speculation based on the posturing and the rumors seemed to indicate that it might be the 6866 700 XT GPU core that might make its way to being the lower end chips on the next next generation, which I think bodes pretty well for the expected performance of RX 7000, because if the lower end cards are currently what a $550 MSRP card can get you, that looks pretty good as long as AMD continues to sell it in line with where it should be, which I know I'm speaking out of my butt about pricing because who knows when this is gonna resolve, hopefully by the end of this year, hopefully by the time the RX 7000 series comes out, but good indication is that it's all gonna be mighty performable performance-ness, ma major power to the GPU. Let me know what you think of multi-chip module GPUs and AMD's RX 7000 series down below in the comments. And I'm gonna talk to you about my down below, which is my back, okay? Down, it's, if I'm laying on my bed, it is my lowest point, actually my butt is. But anyways, we're talking about today's episode sponsor, Chirp and the Chirp Wheel Plus, which is the best back stretching technology, which I mean, it's just a ring, but it actually does give you a unique four-way stretch because because of the spinal canal that's on here and I use it every single day, especially as I'm trying to take care of my body more, work out more, my back muscles are getting tighter. So just loosening that up and making sure that I'm limber and flexible so that I'm not actually getting any sort of performance injury while I'm working out has been key. And the Chirp Wheel is a class one FDA registered medical device. You can purchase it using your HSA savings account in case you happen to have one of those, but it's super simple and effective. You just kind of get on it and you roll your back on it and it releases the tension, but because of the way it's designed, it gives you a unique stretch. It can support up to 500 pounds, so making sure that you are fully supported while you're on top of it. And it comes in three different sizes. You can get the deep tissue size, you can get the medium size, or you could get the large size, or you could get them all in a three pack in case you might need them for different stretching that you're doing. The deep tissue, obviously, really good at kneading out some of those spots where I like to use the medium just as my general day-to-day -day back stretching one. So the chirp wheel helps keep me flimber limber and flexible is what I'm trying to say there. You should check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Chirp for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. Now let's talk about Crypto Stunks, which is not sponsoring us. In fact, it's not sponsoring anything. It's gone down slightly. Bitcoin down 0.6% in the last 24 hours to just below 45 grand. Ethereum down 0.8%. Ugh, it's a worthless cryptocurrency to be at $3,020. Dogecoin up 2%. This is... We haven't seen this in a hot minute. The rest of the crypto market's falling apart, but Dogecoin's up. Oh, 
call me a skippy. Sitting at roughly 30 and a half cents. GameStop, the meme stonks down nearly 4% on the day to close at 157.05 and AMC closing down 1.64% to be at 36.55. It seems like Tesla stock might continue to go down because there are more investigations that are happening around Tesla. We talked about in a previous episode of Hot News that the NHTSA is looking into Tesla and the fact that it's autopilot technology crashes into stopped emergency vehicles that happen to be in the highway when, you know, you shouldn't do that with a car. And now a couple of senators are urging the FTC to investigate Tesla's autopilot and full self-driving claims because they say that Elon Musk as well as Tesla are overinflating the value and the capabilities of their full self-driving because here, spoiler alert, the cars can't drive themselves yet, which Tesla th does disclose this but you have to like go pretty deep into the fine print to actually find this. It is not a level five autonomous system. It's not even level three. It's currently sitting at a level two autonomous system, which there is some expectation and hope that if Tesla can figure out the AI machine learning side of things, they have all of the cars recording billions and billions of miles so that they can actually have a really good neural net to maybe potentially enable this, but based on the full self-driving beta that's out there that people can actually use to drive around the city centers, that is more of like a full level two autonomous, maybe even inching towards level three, uh, it's still not quite there. So FTC potentially investigating Tesla. I do have to wonder, however, just as a quick conspiracy theory, tinfoil hat time with Brett, it seems rather suspicious that the NHTSA and the senators are urging that the FTC investigate Tesla and Ford's kind of on their kick where they're trying to get GM to be able to drop their Blue Cruise or Super Cruise trademark or whatever the heck it is. It just, it seems like there might be some money involved perhaps here somewhere of companies not liking the fact that Tesla uses words that don't mean what they say. What do you think of the whole Tesla full self-driving debacle? I want to hear from you down below in the comments. And this is a debacle of weird products that like I get the concept and why somebody thought of it in the first place, but not sure it actually needs to be implemented. Hollow Ride is an in-car VR gaming system that allows you to play video games that are based on a ride share drive that you're having. I guess whether or not it, your parents are driving you around or you happen to take an Uber or Lyft, but there's things that happen in the game. Like if you're turning left or right in the, in the car, it turns left or right in the game and like, it's a weird mixture of, I get it, and also why would you want this? And I, maybe does it help to prevent motion sickness because you're physically moving with it? It can work with any VR headset. It's an SDK that could be out there, but they have to partner with the car to get the data of where it's going. And then they have to partner with the headset companies in order to make it happen. Weird. What do you guys think of this? Let me know down below in those comments. I'm gonna let you know what I think about Samsung and the fact that they still have ads in their apps of things that you pay thousands of dollars for. It's absolutely absurd. That's my opinion on it. But Samsung is agreeing with the consumer at this point, confirming that they're gonna be removing ads from their stock apps on the mobile phone later this year in things like Samsung Weather, Samsung Pay, and Samsung Theme. They're gonna cease the advertisement on proprietary apps in order to make it so that they're not just trying to milk every single bit of teat cash from the customer. It's ridiculous. This is something that bugs me on a $1,500 smartphone that they're selling to you, like the Galaxy S21 Ultra Highest N1 has those ads in there, even though you already gave the company the money. And then they also have ads on things like their smart TVs, where they're running ads before you even, like as soon as you own it, like, like I paid you the money, Samsung, right? Like I get Amazon's kind of like subsidizing type deal where they did it with the Kindle, where you could either have ads on your lock screen and they'd give you the device at a discounted price because of that. If you were upfront about that, maybe, but the fact that none of your other competitors are doing this, at least the legitimate ones, and the fact that uh, it's just kind of crummy that you're charging us full price and then get, trying to milk advertiser money out of us, I just stop it which you are, so thank you, Samsung. And people seem to be saying thank you to Fractal Design for their latest case release, which is the Torrent case, which is based on airflow. It has a ton of fans included in this thing. It's very open, make sure that you can get all of the airflow that you want to make sure everything's really cool. It's a gorgeous design in my opinion. I absolutely love it. And even Gamers Nexus said that they are trying to get one for their production system because they also really like it. And that's high praise coming from Gamers Nexus. In case you're looking for a good airflow case, the torrent might be at the top of the list. It does cost $190, but again, it 
does include a whole bunch of fans for that price, which helps to make sense of some of that cost. And Adore TV helping to make sense of some of the Raptor Lake updates that are coming out. We're looking at the next next gen. So Alder Lake is supposed to be coming out this year. Raptor Lake is supposed to be coming out towards the end of next year from Intel up to 24 cores in the highest end lineup, eight plus 16 cores and then 32 threads on that for the highest end i9, 16 cores on the i7, which is eight plus eight with 24 threads. And then the i5 has 14 cores with six plus eight cores, which is big and then little and 20 threads is what you can see based on the slide right there, how it's going to break down as you go further lower in the lineup. Whether or not this is true remains to be seen. Obviously, we're a bit further away from the Raptor Lake launch than uh, even Alder Lake at this point. So we'll have to wait and see what Intel's heterogeneous architecture looks like, whether or not this comes to fruition. But in case you're wondering what Raptor Lakes looks like, there you go. And in case you're wondering what Microsoft being a butthole looks like, well, you have decades of evidence, but now we've got even more. Windows 11 gonna make it hard for you to switch away from Edge. You know what you do, Edge? You install Chrome. What is my purpose? You install Chrome. Oh my God. In the name of giving consumers more granular control over their device. They're just gonna make it really difficult for you to switch your default apps, especially when it comes to web browsers. Instead of just being able to search for default apps, no, my friends, you have to find and choose the default application for opening files that are HTM, HTML, PDF, HTTP, HTTPS. If you have any of those file formats you wanna to try to open any of that, based on like sub subdivisions, you have to be like, okay, no, I want this to open in Chrome. I want this to open in Chrome. I want this to open in Firefox. I want this to open in Opera. I want this to open in Tor. I want this to open in Brave. I want this to open in Edge. I want this to open in Internet Explorer. Sometimes the consumer doesn't need that to be the only option, all right? Give us this, absolutely. Give us granular control. But for the general consumer, give us a layer above that. That's just like, hey, all of these things that are commonly associated with web browsers. Chrome, all right? Microsoft, are you ever gonna do that? No, you're not, because you want us to use Edge, which Edge is not bad. Edge isn't a bad browser. Like it has good, good things about it. I mean, it's Chromium at this point, so it's like Edge is worth using to some extent. But honestly, when Microsoft pulls crap like this, I don't want to use it out of spite. What do you think of Microsoft forcing Edge on you? Stop trying to make Edge cool. Edge is never going to be cool. And it won't be cool for me to continue this episode of Hot News any longer. So why don't you go check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talked about a brand new feature coming into GPUs for 10K gaming. See you in tomorrow's episode, my friends. Cheers for breakfast. We'll see you for breakfast.